Okay. So our today's topic is about maintenance CRPC, which is maintenance is under CRPC section 125 and 128. And in that light, we will also discuss the case of Avilasha versus Prakash. So we know regarding the uh, divorce, regarding successions, regarding inheritance, and regarding the maintenance also, which is given after the maintenance, which is given for uh, so on the religious law, like the Muslim personal law and Hindu laws, talks about the divorce thing. Means they talks the maintenance regarding the divorce. But here, the maintenance is also provided in criminal procedure code of the in section. 125 to between section 125 to 128 and it has a wide range because it not only provides maintenance to the wife but also provides maintenance to the to other people we will check the other category of people to whom the men to whom which, who get the maintenance under under crpc section 125 to 128 so moving further okay so first thing let's check what the word maintenance is uh, before starting so the word maintenance is not defined in the CRPC. It's mentioned. It's mentioned in the section 125 of CRPC that maintenance of wife. It talks about maintenance of wife, children, and parents. So the religious laws, such as Muslim personal law and other laws, talks about the maintenance of only wives only. But here it talks about children, maintenance of children and parents also. But the word maintenance is not defined in the CRPC 1973. Uh, so uh, what? Uh, okay. So. Okay, so the it defines uh, means in section 125, it's clearly mentioned that the person having sufficient means will pay the maintenance and sufficient means include property, income and basic capability also, which fulfill basic needs. So if the person refuses to maintain by express or implied way, then magistrate has power to order the order to pay the maintenance. So suppose, let's take an example. Suppose a person, there's a person who doesn't get up, who doesn't get salary. So he can and uh, the there are some there is some other person means the wife of that particular a person a uh, wants to claim maintenance from that person a and that person can uh, that person tells in the court that person a tells in the court that I don't get a salary so how how I'm going to maintain the wife but if the person has the sufficient means which also includes property and basic capability to fulfill the basic needs of his wife then the person a has to pay the maintenance to his wife okay so not only income but also the property and basic capability is included in the maintenance part moving further okay so who can claim maintenance under section 125 to 128 wife child and parents see this is the wider section that in this in this in this section uh, wife child and parents uh, can ask for can claim for maintenance but under the uh, religious law only wife uh, only wife can claim maintenance then moving further yeah so uh, normally in the section 125 there's a meaning of wife and uh, i have not stated the section as whole i have stated the section in different different parts so we will understand what the wife means what the children means and what the parent means otherwise it's in completely in one section only so let's uh, check first what wife is so wife means legal wife if marriage is illegal, then no claim of maintenance. So, wife means legal wife, and though it's obvious that if the, the wife, but then that particular lady can't claim maintenance till she remarry or live separate. It's it's very important. Now, further, wife also include lady live with person, living with person as husband and wife in society long relationship. So, living relationship. It's living relationship. So living relationship, if somebody is living in living relationship and they are not legally married, then what will be the case? So in majority of the judgments where there is case about living marriage, living relationship, then court has declared that suppose two persons are living in a living live in relationship, then if the society sees that sees them as couple, means if the if, if in the eyes of society they are acting like couple. And they are fulfilling all the needs. Like, means suppose uh, if there is, if someone is living like a couple, it means that uh, normally, as the couple live, the person uh, who are living in living are also living like the persons uh, who are just like married person. So, if the society see them as married person, then the lady, then the wife has the right to claim maintenance from 
द पर्सन विद होम ही विद होम शी इज लिविंग दो शी इज नॉट मैरिड टू डेट पर्सन then in chanmunia versus virendra kumar kushwaha 2011 supreme court held that maintenance is allowed for lady live in relationship this is one of the major judgment in which supreme court reiterated though it has also held in many other cases but in chanmunia versus virendra kumar kushwaha it's the judgment of supreme court so it has its own preference so after that it's clearly held that maintenance is allowed for lady who lives in live in relationship with some other person then moving further so when will wife not entitled to get maintenance wife will not entitled to get maintenance if the wife starts living in adultery if the wife is living in adultery then she can't claim maintenance from the husband second if there is no sufficient reason third divorce by mutual consent so second one let's start um, let's uh, let me explain second one so second one states that if there is no sufficient reason so suppose there is a lady uh, whose income is 50000 and her uh, her husband's income is only 20000 so there is no sufficient reason to ask and the husband also has doesn't have any property also so now there is no sufficient reason for the lady to ask maintenance from her husband so lady in this kind of position uh, can't claim not in, is not entitled to get maintenance then divorce by mutual consent suppose there is a divorce by mutual consent between a couple then Uh, if it's mentioned in the divorce, then the lady is not entitled to get maintenance. If there is a divorce by mutual consent, and both the parties means the husband and the wife are on the equal footing, so the wife would have the right to get maintenance. No, going further. Now coming on the word child. What child is? So word child is not defined in the CRPC. Now. it's not defined in crpc but it's defined in indian majority act of 1875 so child means who do not attain 1875 this is the definition of a minor child see child needs to be a minor if he wants maintain if the child is if the child is physically and mentally ill then there is no need that he is minor so suppose see further the prior most condition for getting maintenance in child is that child needs to be a minor but suppose child uh, is physically and mentally ill then then the child can claim maintenance and will get maintenance after he gets after after he becomes major also so though being minor is a prior condition but if child is physically and mentally ill and can't do his her work properly and is not able to uh, is not able to do well in economic means then child will get the maintenance after after be, becoming major also so child include whether legitimate or illegitimate child this is the most important condition then moving further so now on the word parents so if the uh, if the parents are unable to maintain themselves then they will need then they will uh, need maintenance second mother get maintenance only from husband but if husband is not capable then she has right to get it from children see this, this concept originates from the wife husband relationship that if wife is not economically sufficient for herself then she has all the rights to claim maintenance from the husband so if the mother or mother is not economically sufficient economically well done then she can claim maintenance husband but if the husband is also not capable then the mother has the right to get it from children and from which children only from the children who has attained the majority not from the children who have not attained the majority means minor can't pay so father has also right to claim from children but from the passage of the question in the third paper so if married and depend dependent on on her husband then parents has no right to claim maintenance from daughter though parents can claim maintenance from a uh, from a daughter also but if the daughter is herself not sufficient for, means herself not uh, getting any income of her own and she is dependent on her husband then the parents can't claim maintenance from the daughter okay this is the case then moving further okay now about we are going to come on section 126 and it states the procedure part so 
proceeding of section 125 taken against any person where the proceeding is going to be take uh, where the proceeding is going to take place at the where the person resides where he or his wife resides last reside with wife then let's take ek one one example of each suppose um, one person ram uh, stays in delhi and uh, his wife stays in uh, ahmedabad then uh, the suit can be filed at delhi because the person the because, suppose the wife is going to claim maintenance against ram then the suit can be filed at delhi as per section 125 clause a suppose in the clause b where he or his wife resides suppose now the wife resides in ahmedabad and uh, the his, her husband resides in delhi now the wife has all the rights to claim maintenance uh, from the husband uh, from her husband uh, by uh, by proceeding against him in uh, ahmedabad court also so the court, the suit can be filed in ahmedabad court also as per section uh, 126 clause b now the clause c last reside with husband suppose now the couple uh, are living separately means the husband is living separately and the wife is also living separately but last they have resided in delhi at at the home of husband both husband and wife then then the wife but but husband is the resident of uh, of mumbai and wife is the resident of uh, ahmedabad but lastly they have resided in delhi uh, where uh, where uh, where there is office of the husband then wife has all the means and wife has the right to claim maintenance from the husband at the place where she last resided with her with her with her husband uh, so she can uh, file the suit in delhi court also as per section 126 clause c now if court assume that party voluntarily neglect the proceeding then ex parte then ex parte order is given Here it's written ex parte. It's not ex parte. It's ex parte order is given. So suppose wife has filed a claim. Not only wife, suppose children or um, parents has filed uh, have filed a claim against uh, against any male person, against their child, against the um, wife's husband. So uh, and he is not turning up in the court that particular person. Then court has all the right to give their judgment. Uh, give its judgment. is known as ex parte order ex parte means when the other party is absent in the court so we have heard in the principles of natural justice that while delivering the judgment both parties should be present in the court but suppose the husband is not present and is not turning up in the court after many notices then then uh, it's it's a uh, it's right for the court to pass a judgment in the absence of the husband court can do so now for setting aside the ex parte order the limitation period is 3 months now now suppose husband uh, now if court has passed the judgment then it has become binding on the husband suppose court has passed that the husband has to pay uh, 18000 per month to the wife so if court has passed the judgment then court can take punitive measures also to uh, fulfill the judgment from the husband so it is now binding on the husband to fulfill the court's judgment by providing wife with 18000 per month and if husband is not satisfied with the court's order so though the husband is absent when court has given the order husband has the choice now uh, as the court has given the order now husband has the choice to challenge that particular judgment of the court in the period of 3 months if the uh, because the judgment was ex parte when the husband was not present in the court then that's why husband has the right to challenge the judgment in 3 months in the same court and suppose a husband doesn't doesn't challenge uh, doesn't challenge that judgment in 3 months then the period will lapse and that judgment will become final judgment of that particular particular court then the husband will have the right to appeal against that judgment he can't go in same court by saying that i am i am absent during the judgment he can appeal in the different court okay then moving further Okay, so uh, let's uh, discuss first one thing also. What is the scope and objective of proceeding? So the proceedings are not punishable in nature, as though they are mentioned in the Criminal Procedure Code. But the proceedings are not punishable in nature. The main objective of Chapter Nine of CRPC, uh, that is of maintenance, is not to punish a person who is not maintaining those whom he is bound to maintain. The main objective is to prevent uh, prevent homelessness by way of procedure to provide a speedy remedy. 
to those who are in pain suppose a wife a lady left her uh, home and starts staying in the home of her husband uh, and then husband leaves her then she needs a speedy remedy so the main objective of this act is to provide a speedy remedy to the person then it doesn't make any distinction between person belonging to different religions or castes suppose uh, if i am a hindu then i can't claim maintenance and i can't claim other things uh, by by the way of muslim personal law i need to be have a muslim while uh, if i want to go through go in the court by the way of muslim personal law and if someone is muslim uh, he or she can't approach the court by the way of uh, hindu personal law hindu law then but both uh, without making any distinction in the gender the any person can approach the court by the means of section 125 okay so it doesn't make any distinction between persons belonging to different religions or castes and one more thing that it has no relation to the personal laws of the parties which we have seen that it has no relation with the personal laws of parties then, okay Uh, but i forgot this very interesting which uh, i be left so as he has defined wife in that case and it includes even those cases where a man and woman have been living together we uh, just uh, we have done that part and a wife for a reasonably long period of time so they have also include, included i just got remember this thing that the person who are living in living relationship have to live for a reasonably long period of time and what is the definition of reasonably long period of time that court will decide so strict proof of marriage should not be a precondition of maintenance under section 120 of crpc so it is very obvious that if strict proof of marriage is not a precondition under section 125 then a person uh, who then the person who are living in living relationship has also right to claim maintenance from the other spouse okay moving further now now we have come to section 127 which is about alteration so magistrate is empowered to decrease and increase the maintenance due to change in circumstances okay so means future can be any how different so magistrate has the power to decrease or increase the maintenance money so what are, what can be the circumstances the first circumstance is if the wife starts living in adultery second change in income third death or birth of child fourth child growing older fifth if lady remarries then magistrate cancel the order in the consequence of competent civil court okay so first let's start discussing from the first circumstance so if the wife uh, suppose a particular wife has granted uh, has been granted uh, the maintenance and then after that after getting maintenance for 3 to 4 months now husband has the proof that the wife start has started living in adultery then the husband can go to the that particular magistrate who has passed the judgment in that particular court and ask the and will provide the magistrate with those proofs and then magistrate is empowered to decrease and increase the maintenance money of maintenance due to change in circumstances second if the income is changed suppose the husband lost uh, his job due to covid 19 pandemic and before covid 19 he has been continuously and on a regular basis has been providing the wife with uh, 25000 money per month rupees 25000 per month but after covid 19 he lost his job and now he is not very stable then the then he has economic losses also in his business then he can move to court to that particular magistrate and can claim to decrease and increase uh, to decrease the maintenance money due to change in circumstances then death or death or birth of child is a very obvious thing moving child growing older suppose a uh, wife is getting maintained since since her child is study, since her child was studying in class second but now after 8 years child uh, child uh, child is in 10th class and you know that there is a there is a big difference between the fees of school in second class and the fees of school in 10th class then then the then the wife can move to the court to increase the maintenance due to change in circumstances or if lady remarries suppose a person has been providing to his wife maintenance money and then after three after providing 3 to 4 months of maintenance he got news that his wife has married somebody else now 
then then he can move to the court as the um, move to the court and can claim that his wife has remarried any uh, other person and so now it's the duty of the other person to provide economic stability to his wife now he has not been she has not been his wife now uh, so so uh, he can move to the court to means null the the maintenance moving further we are on section 128 which is about enforcement of order of maintenance so interim on final or final order uh, copy is given to person in whose favor the order is given without any cost so the person in whom favor the order is given will not will not have to pay any cost to his lawyer also to his or her lawyer also because that cost will be provided by the other party okay so order is enforced by any magistrate on any place then but magistrate satisfy that identity of parties and non payment of allowance or expenses due magistrate has to, has to satisfy that all the allowances and expenses has been paid then moving further okay so we will be on abhilasha versus prakash but first let's discuss uh, there are some essential conditions for granting maintenance and those essential conditions needs to be present at the time when court is deciding the maintenance case so what are these essential conditions which need to be fulfilled for claiming and granting maintenance the first one should be see it's very general just think it that you will also come to a conclusion that these essential conditions need to be present at that time so the first condition is about sufficient means for maintenance are available this is the first condition second second one is that neglect or refusal to maintain uh, after the demand of maintenance need to be present third the person claiming maintenance must be unable to maintain himself or herself must be unable okay so the person who is claiming maintenance he should prove in the court that he or she is unable to maintain himself or herself then quantum of maintenance depends on the standard of living suppose if let's take the example of ambani so if someone from the ambani family ask maintenance from from the husband then their standard is totally different they will ask maintenance of 1 crore 2 crores but someone from a very middle class family whose husband earns only 50000 a month then the maintenance charges will be totally different will be only 10000 15000 or max to max 20000 okay so the quantum of maintenance depends on the standard of living of the people of the couple now now we are on the case of abhilasha versus prakash this is the recent case and due to this case only we are we have been discussing the maintenance so let's check this case okay so let's uh, start with the facts of this case so what happened an application was filed in the um, filed by the mother of the appellant abhilasha she is the mother of the appellant no she is the uh, Appellant is Abhilasha, and mother filed her mother filed the uh, application on behalf of her and her two brothers under Section 125 CRPC against her father, Mr. Prakash, for claiming maintenance, which was later on dismissed by the additional session judges. Then, against this order, an appeal was made uh, for the criminal revision of the said judgment by additional session judges in the High Court under Section 498 CRPC. however it was held by the high court that children are entitled to maintenance in case of a minority only and after attaining majority the maintenance can be done only because of any physical or mental abnormality or any injury which made them unable to maintain themselves so we have discussed we have discussed this thing while discussing the children part that children are entitled to get maintenance only and only uh, when they uh, when they have not attained the majority and they are uh, means they are entitled to get maintenance after attaining majority only if they have any physical deformity or mental deformity so aggrieved from the order passed by the high court an appeal was filed by the appellant abhilasha who is the daughter of the respondent mr prakash in the supreme court in this case abhilasha versus prakash and others now moving further what are the appellant's arguments she argued that it was granted by the uh, counsel on behalf of the appellant that though she had attained majority since she is unmarried uh, she has all rights to claim maintenance from her father so the counsel is claiming that she is unmarried and that's why she has the right to claim maintenance from her father there was an error committed by the high court in excusing the application filed by the appellant under section 482 crpc on the wrong premise 
that after attaining majority and not suffering from physical or mental abnormality she is not entitled to any maintenance then then further ne next thing is very important next uh, we should we will discuss this also that he submitted the council for appellant submitted that under section 20 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 see this clause is very important under section 20 of hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 there is an obligation on a person to maintain his daughter if she is unmarried additionally the appellant is still unemployed which made her vulnerable for claiming maintenance so under uh, see this is the difference in section 125 if the daughter attains majority then uh, then uh, she uh, she has no right to ask claim for maintenance from the father but under section 20 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 till the daughter is not married and that is can vary she can be of 30 and she is unmarried so till the daughter is not married she can ask and uh, she can claim maintenance from her father uh, under section 20 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act okay and the appellant is arguing on the basis of section 20 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act of 1956 that further what is the respondent's argument contrary to the submissions made by appellant it was submitted by the council on behalf of respondent mr prakash that under section 125 crpc entitlement to claim maintenance by a daughter who has attained majority is confined to cases where the person because of any physical or mental abnormality or injury unable to maintain herself so the respondent is saying the counsel for respondent is saying the same thing which is mentioned in the section 125 of crpc and was fighting on the basis of section 125 of crpc so there is clash of sections now it's very obvious that section 20 of uh, indo adoption maintenance act of 1956 states uh, states about maintenance and section 125 also states about maintenance but then also there is a very slight difference and which is a very major difference though the difference though both are talking about maintenance but there is a difference that in section 20 uh, of hindu adoption and maintenance act uh, the daughter can claim maintenance till she is unmarried though she had attained the majority but in section 125 a child either it be a daughter or a son can claim maintenance till they have not attained major till they have not attained majority and they can claim maintenance after attaining majority only if they have any mental or physical abnormality okay moving further now what is the observation of a court so the court is of the view that it is correct that under section 125 of crpc maintenance to a major daughter can only be granted when she is suffering from a physical or mental abnormality or any fatal injury in which she was unable to maintain herself irrespective of the fact she is married or unmarried so here one more point comes at suppose daughter has attained the majority okay and she is married also now and but the daughter is suffering from uh, one physical any physical or mental abnormality then after being married can she claim maintenance from her parent she can she can claim maintenance as per section 125 of crpc and court stated this that suppose suppose daughter has attained the majority and is married also then the daughter can claim maintenance only if she uh, only if she has any physical uh, or mental abnormality now it however was observed by the court that the hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 was enacted to amend and codify the laws relating to adoptions and maintenance among hindus now the court has to see if the application is no, uh, applicant is not suffering from any physical or mental abnormality or injury which is mentioned under section 125 crpc then by section 20 of the act 1956 she is entitled to claim maintenance till she is unmarried or not okay then court has stated what they have to decide now further court have stated that the maintenance contemplated under section 20 of the 1956 act is a larger and broader concept see this is the point uh, this is the um, main observation of the court and on 
its basis court will give the judgment that the maintenance contemplated under section 20 of the 1956 act is a larger and broader concept whereas maintenance under section 125 crpc is a narrow concept because it just provides immediate relief to the applicant see the way of section 125 crpc is made only for speedy remedy and we have discussed it while discussing section 125 the way under section 125 is for speedy remedy therefore no exception can be taken to the judgment passed by the family court which is based on a combined reading of section 125 of code of criminal procedure 1973 and section 23 of 20 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 because family courts have the jurisdiction exercisable by a magistrate of first class under chapter 9 of crpc relating to ordering for maintenance of wife children and parents further court said that hence the submissions made by the appellant that as an unmarried hindu daughter she can claim maintenance from her father till she is married and unable to maintain herself relying on section 20 clause 3 of the hindu adoption maintenance act 1956 was accepted by the court and the main reason for what uh, for uh, why it has been accepted is because it's mentioned in the second point yeah, it's mentioned in the first point that section 20 of the 1956 act is a larger and broader concept whereas maintenance under section 125 crpc is a narrow concept so court has taken a larger and a broader view because the daughter has claimed the maintenance under section 20 clause 3 of hindu adoption and maintenance act okay so this is for today's class we have done the slide you can log into the you can go to the portal and access the questions